in my life vlog. It's it's been it's been a little while since I vlogged. I created a video series of a diary of a yoga teacher and have been busy creating an ebook that is out now. And as I mentioned in my last video, which was not a vlog, but just a little short video explaining that we can do anything, but we can't do everything all at the same time. So I wasn't able to create my regular vlogs just for a couple of weeks, but I'm back now. And I thought we could hang out for the day, just kind of like getting back into the flow of things, back into the routine, because I have been away for the weekend with my best friends and we had such a wonderful time. It's been so, so nice and I feel very well rested. It was very, very needed and I am now feeling very excited to get back into, into my, my routine. Like, I'm a routine girly. I love my routines. So I'm excited to get back into them. So I thought we could do that together and also get back into, into my vlogging routine again. I think it's healthy to take a break from our routines and it wasn't that I'd got to a point where I felt like I needed to take a break but I think it just keeps things really like fresh and inspiring and I have been excited to get back into my routine whereas I think if we don't ever give ourselves that break then we don't always then feel the benefits from doing it. I think like not doing my routines for the weekend made me realise that like, how much I love them and like why I do them. And so yeah, I think I think there's like fours and against for sticking to routines when you go away on holiday. And there have definitely been holidays in the past where I have still done my routines and that served me then. But I feel like I'm leaning more into that state of just like just going with the flow and not abandoning my morning routine. I don't feel like that's the right word, but rather than being in that more yang energy, I think when we go away, it's important that we embrace that more yin energy and go with the flow. And anyway, that's left me feeling very invigorated and energized, ready to reconnect with my, my regular daily yoga inspired lifestyle routine. A few vlogs ago, I shared how I tried laminating my eyebrows and eyelashes. And this is the second time that I have done it. And the process was a lot easier the second time around. But I have to say, I have noticed that I have got eyelash growth again. I shared how I wanted to step away from using my eyelash curlers because I had created some bold patches from overusing my eyelash curlers. I take full responsibility for that. And since then doing the lash lift, haven't been using my eyelash curlers and I've definitely noticed that growth. So that's a yay. While I've been away, I have had a delivery from the Inspired Stories. I believe this is the daily planner. It's the undated daily planner in my last vlog it will be gosh this is like that will be like a month ago sorry about that so a month ago i went to an event with the inspired stories and i got my new 2025 planner but went for a different variety so i've been using the inspired stories planners for years and have tried out and explored their different planners and they've always served me for that point in my life but I went to the event thinking that I'd probably um, go back to using the lifestyle planner. But then when I saw the daily, I just felt so connected with it and felt really inspired with it too. And so made that decision to go for the daily. But I also didn't want to wait until 2025. And they have undated planners too. So I have got the undated daily planner for the rest of this year and then I can start the, the date of 2025 planner in the new year. I 
feel like this is such good timing that this has arrived right here, right now, because like I said, I wanted to use this week to kind of get back into the flow with things. And like, yeah, this, this is just one of those divine timing things. I will open it later. I have got plans to go to the gym and then I've got my Spanish lesson. So I'm gonna do that this afternoon because now I need to do some admin work and I have hardly been on my phone this weekend. It's been so, so lovely. Um, and I didn't take my computer with me. So it's been like a very nice digital detox this weekend. So I know that I'm gonna have then more things to just check in with. So I need to do emails. I need to check in with WhatsApp. I need to, and that's personal and business one as well. So I've hardly been on my, on my, like in my personal WhatsApp too. And I need to then check in with Instagram, reply to YouTube comments. So I have set aside that little bit more time to do my admin work this morning. So I'm gonna get that done, go to the gym, Spanish lesson, come back, have some lunch, and then we'll open this together. ago I got sent this rainbow dust from Space Goods and it's a mushroom and adaptogen super blend and it is absolutely delicious I took it away with me for the weekend so my friends could try it too and when you make it with oat milk which is what I've done now it literally tastes like a hot chocolate it's so delicious and so I thought I would make myself a cup of rainbow dust while I get my new inspired stories planner all set up and organised. And if any of you want to give it a try, let me know because they sent me a code that gives you a discount. You know, it's like a discount for the things that we want to get. Hi Caroline, we hope you love using the Undated Daily Planner until the start of 2025 when you switch to the 2025 Daily Planner, wishing you the most beautiful and exciting last four months of 2024, warmest from the Inspired Stories team. So, I have my Inspired Stories planners, I have all three of them. So this one is the one that I've been currently using, this is the 2024 planner and this one is my 2025 one so this is the one that I will be using at the start of next year but the layout of this one is the same as this new one that I, I've got but this one is undated so it can be used at any time now there is a difference in thickness with both of them because this one is for the whole of the year whereas this one is a six month one so I'm going to put the 2025 one to one side for now and I kind of want to then just transfer some things from my 2024 one into this new daily planner and I'm going to actually begin with this page here which is all about the goals that I want to achieve. In the last video, the last vlog that I shared, I spoke about how I'm gonna be using these quarterly to create quarterly goals rather than just setting them at the start of the year and having too many. Because again, we can do anything, but we can't do everything. And we're more likely to then achieve and manifest the goals that we set out if there aren't so many and it's not so overwhelming. 
Now, right now we are still in like the third quarter of the year, but surely we'll be coming into the final quarter of 2024. It is never too late to make a change. We do not need to wait until a new year to begin again or to start something new. We have got still a huge chunk of time left of 2024 to make things happen. We've got the rest of September, October, November and December. That is a great amount of time to create change and to manifest. So, you know, go back to the start of the year or go back to where you have maybe written down your goals for the year and reflect on them. What went well, what hasn't gone so well, but what can you do now for the rest of 2024 to make them become a reality so don't give up on your goals and don't give up on yourself I am going to then write in my goals for the rest of 2024 now I've already written them down anyway in here so it's just kind of like a case of them copying them over but I probably wouldn't have then done this quarterly bit until probably at the end of September and the start of October but I'm going to do this now instead so Let's get the goals for the rest of 2024 written over here in my new daily planner. Now I want to do the monthly planning. So this bit looks very similar to the monthly planning section in both of the diaries. Right now, we are halfway through September, so I'm going to do one for September, and then I'll do one for then, obviously, October when it comes. So I'm just going to fill this out. Obviously, this is midway through the month. I wouldn't normally do that, but I want to just, then again, almost just copy out what I'd written for September in my 2024 one, and then implement and put it in here. There are similarities between all of the planners with their annual layout and monthly layout but the biggest difference is the daily layout and this is why I have made the change so I'm going to show you what my current planner looks like I've just come up showing you a blank page here so if you can see there is then the this is the whole space and section for just for the day so it's a, it's a lot smaller and this worked well for me and I was glad that I chose this at the start of the year but as the year went on I did think I'd go back to the lifestyle one which just has like columns for each of the days I really missed having the times for things in but that's the current layout with that one whereas the daily my new planner is a lot more in depth with the daily layout so it's actually got a whole page to fill in and it has got the whole time whole time layout for the day which was what the lifestyle one is like but that one just basically had like Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday on a two page layout whereas this one has each day has its whole page which is what I wanted and then I can use this a lot more as a like to-do list a tick list I love that I can then put in tasks at certain times because then that is time blocking and I feel like time blocking, even setting a timer to do tasks are really helpful tools and skills that we can use to be productive and not just be busy. So I'm really trying to move away from being busy and instead be productive. And I just feel like it's very clear and laid out with things to do. And I also find that when I've been using this planner, I like to then write things in order of the day of what I'm when I'm doing things and I found that like if something then I'd added something in in between two slots I didn't like how then I'd like put it underneath it just wasn't like a then a chronological order or flow to things whereas I feel like here is very clear of when I've got then space and time and I can just then slot it in. Today is not over and so now I am going to fill in the rest of today and I am going to write down the tasks that I still need to achieve 
And then at the end of today, I will be filling in the box that says the best thing about today. And that is something that is in all of the planners. That has been a ritual that I have been doing every evening since I came home from that event. And I started doing that because I recognised how I was focusing on the things that I needed to learn from. I've shared how I feel like I'm very good at finding the lessons I need to learn and discovering the wisdom, which is something that I'm proud of to be able to do and a skill that is has served me and is incredibly useful and will continue to serve me. However, I reflected that I'm not so good at then focusing on the things that have gone well. And it doesn't have to be huge things, it can be small things. And it can really then put you into an abundant mindset of then you know, putting yourself into an energy of appreciation and gratitude and from there we can be a lot more content with where we are right here right now and just you know although we want to grow and evolve in life doing so from a place of feeling calm content and grounded with where we are so I want to still have this page done so I can then do this this evening when I get back home from the studio and then another ritual I want to start to do is which I have been doing as well but not been able to do it in so much depth due to the nature of the layout. I then want to set a to-do list for the next day and just get really clear on what my schedule looks like. So I'm just finishing the day, just feeling like really organised, really clear for the next day. And then ready to start the new day feeling aligned, inspired and fresh. One of my favourite features of the Inspired Stories planners is the habit and exercise tracking box that is on every weekly layout. Whereas on my new daily undated planner, it's in the new, in the 2025 one, but in this undated one, they don't have it. However, I don't need to worry because I have got it basically in sticky note form. So I can still use this feature and I would just then write it on here and then stick it in there. So I've still got my favourite feature in post-it note form. Two rituals that I am implementing with my new daily planner is going to be very, very similar to what I do for 2025. And actually, do you know what? I'm kind of glad I've got this little bit of time to be before the new year because it just gives me a chance just to explore this way of doing things and make any changes, any tweaks that I need to so that I can really begin 2025 with this new system in place that can really support me with the way that I want to show up and live my life. A few vlogs ago, again, I feel like I'm just repeating that phrase, I shared how I was having a signature Caroline Inspired scent created and I met with an aromatherapist and created two different blends and my homework was to give them a smell over a week, week period and just to see which one I like, just to notice the changes and I also took them to the Inspired Studio to see what the lovely souls there thought. Pretty much a 50-50 split. Um, they are very very similar, there's just one oil that's different in each of them. But since then I have then ordered all of the oils that are in them now and now I am just experimenting with the amount of drops that I need. So what we did before, in this one, there was just one drop of every essential oil. Now I need to work out the, the quantities. So I'm going to just play around with that now. I've got a spare bottle. I'm just going to play around, make a little note of the amount of drops that I use in each one. And then for the next week, just play around with the different quantities and see which one I like on there. And hopefully then narrow it down to know exactly what essential oils I want to use and the amount. I love using the neon diffusers. I've got one, a big one at home and then one at the studio. And then I've also got the little like portable pod and the battery lasts ages on this. And basically this is the pure essential oil so it's not got any water in so I actually use this pod in my yoga house in my in my office because it's at the bottom of the garden so it saves me then like 
you know, filling up the, the diffuser with the water and then taking it down there. So it works perfectly for there. But I thought, so I've, I've, so I've filled up, not loads, but a blend, like a mixture um, of the essential oils. And I thought I could also take this down to the studio and just put in the living room, the waiting room, and just see what that smells like there too. So I have now got this blend to use in the diffuser at the studio and then also the other blend in here to take to the studio too but use in the living room they've both got exactly the same amounts in i just want to see what it smells like in in those different spaces because one of the rooms is a lot smaller than the other once i have worked out the quantities that i'm using within the blend i will then create like bigger batches of it and then also create then a room mist and then Little massage oil that I'll use into that. Scene.